Good evening, and welcome to Otis Jerry's Creepypasta Crypt. In the mood for a tasty pasta to increase your adrenaline rush. Well, you've come to the right place. Pull up a chair, get some popcorn, put your feet up, and have a listen, if you dare. <laughs> My Mother Loved Music by Slade Hunter Narrated by Otis Jiry You want to know about my mother? Well, my mother loved music. We had an old piano in our living room for as long as I could remember. My mother loved it, though she never played it. But she was very protective of the piano, an old family heirloom. When I was little, she wouldn't let me play on it. For that, like forbidden fruit, I was always drawn to it. Then, on my sixth birthday, Mother pulled me into her lap and finally let me play. This was the best birthday gift I ever got. I enjoyed pressing each key and hearing the note carry around the room. I never thought it was weird that only six of the black keys worked. It didn't matter. I was in love. I can still remember the sounds that resonated through me that day. The notes were odd and warped, but it made the old piano that more endearing to me. And after that, Mother was always by the piano. She would be playing or teaching me or watching me play. But then there would be certain days that I would come home and Mother would be sitting at the bench, a secretive smile on her face. Come, come, I have a surprise. I would sit down, and she would ask me to play through a piece. And like Christmas on my birthday, as my hands roll across the keys, a new sound would echo through the house. I would look up at her in such reverent glee. She got a black key fixed. This was how I found my love for music. These precious moments I had with my mother made me share her love of music. For each note that got restored through the years, I loved it more. For how much she loved music, I never understood why she never pursued it. I asked her multiple times, but she would always say, Oh, I had a chance once, but other things came up. And where would you be if I had chosen to be a grand pianist? She would then kiss my temple and show me a new key position. She was a great piano teacher, and she taught me everything. By the time I finished high school, some called me a piano prodigy. It wasn't long before I had many schools and even jobs lined up for me, asking for me, wanting me. But as I looked at all my options, there was only one that my mother wanted me to have more than any other. The pianist position at the McElry Opera House. She had contacted them over and over again through the years, wanting me to have that position. And finally, after all this time, I got the letter from them. The person they were going to hire, some well-known European pianist, was no longer available. They now wanted me for the position. But as my mother danced around, waving the letter in the air, I stood dumbfounded. I wasn't happy or ecstatic. In fact, I was horrified. I didn't want the position. I never wanted the position. Everyone knew that all McElry pianists were cursed. For the last twenty years, no one has held that position for more than six months. Some of the past pianists have had to leave because they got in minor accidents in the theater. Others claim to have received threatening letters. Many just up and left after hearing the curses and believing in the superstition. However, those that persevered through the six months ended up dead, hanging from the ceiling with dulled piano wire. While some believed the murder, there was no evidence, and all the reports pointed to suicide. And so the curse was started. And now I was going to be one of them, one of the cursed pianists. I closed my eyes, trying not to freak out. However, 
My mother was grinning and clapping her hands. I'm so proud of you. I gently grabbed her arms. But mom, I don't want to work there. She grinned and grabbed my hand to pull me to the living room. Don't be silly. Come sit down and play me a tune. I sat down, slightly defeated. She was so happy right now I couldn't destroy that. I'd bring it up later. I started to play, and as I hit one of the dead keys, I looked up in surprise as a new note played. I turned to her in surprise. You fixed the last one? She nodded excitedly. Of course. It was a surprise for you getting the job. I faltered in the tune I was playing. How did you know I'd get the job? She just grinned and started playing the piano herself, picking up where I left off. You were destined for that job. I knew the moment that I had to give up that job to have you that you would make me proud and get my job back. I grabbed her hand, stopping the song yet again. Wait, that's why you wanted me to have this job? You work there? She just grinned and patted my cheek. Yes, of course. Didn't I tell you? I was destined for that job, and so are you. I made sure that nothing would stand in your way, and I made sure you were perfect. Everything was perfect. She went back to playing as I asked. Nothing would stand in my way? She giggled as she changed tempo. Of course. I trained you to be the best. And I made sure that... McGillery would have the position for you whenever you were ready. After all, I'm the one that started the rumors. She couldn't possibly mean that, could she? But by then, everything started to make sense. My mother was the curse. My mother, scared, harmed. Oh my God, what about the deaths? Had my mother killed them? I got up and slowly walked over to the phone. As I picked it up, I looked back at Mother. As she starts playing a new song, I made the call. Since then, it's been a swirl of motion and blurred lights and chaos, with the police and news vans and questions. Do you have proof that she killed them? Is she really the McCallery killer? I don't know. The only thing I do know was that my mother loved music.